There we go. We are now recording. How's that? Great. So um, I'll just do a quick introduction, Alex. Uh, my name is Lynn. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at Wilkes. Um, I have the New York Territory as well as the Connecticut and some Pennsylvania counties. Um, I've been in my position for about three years now. Um, this is going to be my fourth recruiting season. Um, so what we do in the admissions office is we just uh, help students through the entire process of like the application, financial aid, orientation, um, all the way up until you are about like a matriculated student. So we'll be bothering you as much as you bother us. So don't be afraid to ask any questions. Um, we're always there to help you. Um, and unfortunately, I'm not your admissions counselor, but Marquita White is your admissions counselor. So uh, she's great and she'll be able to help you through the entire process there. Um, so do you guys just want to start with a quick introduction um, about like what you do and then we can go from there? Yes. Awesome. Great. Right. Who, who wants to jump in? Do you want to go first? <laughs> sure. So Alex, uh, my name is Eric Ruggiero. I'm part of Integrative Media Art and Design. Um, I kind of help organize things, I guess. How's that? And I've been here a long, a long time. <laughs> I've been here a long time. Um, uh, I'm Lisa Reynolds. I am assistant professor of graphic design in the digital design and media art major. And I teach mostly foundational design classes as well as our senior portfolio capstone. So I see at the beginning and then at the end and then a little bit in the middle. Heather, do you want to go? <laughs> Andy? Me? Okay. Um, I'm Andy. I'm a new assistant professor at Integrated Media. Uh, I was hired last year to work with uh, Professor Ruggiero on um, building the new minor called Emerging, Game and Emerging Technology. And the good news is that we, uh, we have that approved uh, just this semester. And I'm mainly going to be teaching video game design courses. So if you're ever interested in doing video game design and well, some of the courses I'm teaching, you're welcome to come and talk to me. And um, I'm Heather Sincavich. <clears throat> I'm um, assistant professor and the director of the Sordoni Art Gallery. It's, it's the campus's art gallery here um, at Wilkes. Um, I teach the more on the art side of things. So um, I teach the drawing class and I also teach a, a great course called Women in Art. Yay. And, um, and I also teach some foundational stuff um, in DDMA. Um, so hopefully if you get to campus to visit, you should definitely come over to the Sordoni and check it out. It's really, really awesome. Good. All right, so here I'm gonna, I'll share out um, our IMED presentation. So welcome to uh, Integrated Media Art and Design, uh, offering both uh, a Bachelor's of Arts and a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Digital Design and Media Art. So here in Digital Design and Media Art, we do lots of creative things. That's what our goal is. And um, we have our core courses of art design and technology that have a full range of creative content that we do in those courses, coupled with a thing called a cognate minor. So that's a specialty area. Uh, so the, uh, the major credits are all together. The major and the minor credits are all together. It's 122 credits to graduate. And a good chunk of those, 18 plus, are in your cognate minor based on your interests. Uh, so majority of our students are in the art cognate minor. We uh, also have, you see the others on the upper right hand corner, communications, computer science, English, et cetera. Um, and we have our new cognate minor. It's not there, is it Andy? Game and Emergent Technology. I don't think it's there. No, it's not there yet. It's not there yet. That's how, that's how new it is. <laughs> <laughs> we have to resubmit this to the people that, that change that. <laughs> Us people that is. Uh, so, that the curriculum is, is as, I, as I said, the way it's set up, we have our core courses, our IM courses, integrative media courses of art design and technology, 
coupled with the Cognate Minor and the uh, Gen Ed courses. Uh, that's what comprises the, the core set of courses that you would take. Um, as I said, many of us are doing, uh, of course, all of us are doing creative things, but many are doing their own kind of area of expertise and interest. So we have students that are more graphic design oriented, let's call it um, more motion oriented, some now more in the gaming area or interactive areas. Um, so we have a full range. We're not a, a one-stop shop. All of our students really are focused on um, their own creative goals, and we're here to help achieve those. And you can see some career opportunities, and we have students uh, that we'll show you at the end of the presentation that have gone into a, a wide range of these different creative production areas. Yeah, the really exciting thing about our major, and I think you notice, you, you'll notice it when you look at the sort of practice areas of all of our faculty, um, is that we all really specialize in very different areas. So it offers a little bit more of a broad perspective um, on how, you know, creative careers happen, how they manifest, the kind of work that you do. Um, and just, it, I think it also shines a light on how multi-channel everything is now. Um, everything we do and every project one of our, our students do, as you'll see when you look at their portfolios, almost always has both a traditional print, a digital application, sometimes a motion or, or an animated application. Um, so everything we do really is approached from a very multimedia um, perspective. So in this slide, we just really talk about, you know, we, we are, our group, uh, we have, I'd say, you know, relatively small numbers per faculty ratio. Uh, our largest class room holds 16. Uh, we often have classes that are lower than that. Um, it gives us a lot of opportunity for us as professors to interact with our students um, on, a, on a one in a group basis. So we have a close knit, I say family oriented environment. I think that's very important for us. Our students really help each other and work together. Um, we're really here to promote, you know, personal vision. And as I said in, here in the slide, an independent si style and self exploration and really trying to um, explore your goals. So you uh, expressed an interest in a couple creative areas and we have courses that really touch on all those and you can build your portfolio in, in those directions as you become more familiar with what you want to do, which is really, I think, a good option for students. Not always do you know what you want to do when you first start, but you want to do something creative. And I think our department really does that really well. It gives you the opportunity to start learning creative, uh, different creative type courses, and then you can start to decide on the areas that you feel that you're really good at and really like. And here's a bunch of just words down at the bottom there that talk about things, you know, as you said, like, like animation, like interactivity. And um, a lot of it is, as I said, teamwork, communication, and um, creative problem solving. So we're very much um, interested in that. Uh, one of the things uh, I mentioned early on um, is we do offer both a BA and a BFA, the Bachelor of Fine Arts. Um, Heather, which is, see, there she is. Um, is coordinating our BFA efforts. So if you have interest or questions on the BFA, um, that, that is um, a lot of the information is online in our website, but Heather or myself, uh, you can certainly contact or reach out to us to ask about um, more details in that. So the fine arts really just means um, that 65% of your courses were, would be in the creative arena. So either the IM um, or um, art oriented courses, and there probably are, are a few others out there through approval can work for the degree also. Um, anything else you wanna add Heather to that? Sure, um, for the BFA program, there is an application process. And what we do is we look at a small portfolio of work that you've already done. Um, and that gets submitted to us along with a short essay that just kind of talks about your career goals. 
Um, that comes to me and then I disseminate it within the faculty of our department, these faces that you see right here. And uh, we all take a look at your work um, and discuss. Um, and then you, you get an admittance letter um, whether or not you got into the program. But um, bottom line is that you can be in the BFA program or you can be in the BA program. It's not like you're not going to be in the DDMA department. Um, <laughs> but there is, there is an admitted, uh, admitted process to get into the BFA program. Okay. And I'm the person that helps you through it. So don't worry. <laughs> I, you know, I answer a lot of questions. I kind of get you there. Um, so don't worry. I'm, I'm happy to help at any time. No questions too small. <laughs> Very cool. You I have, have a question, question Alex. Uh, do you guys focus on 2D and 3D animation, or do you focus on just a specific one? I, I'd say we, we don't say, I, I'm going to answer this broadly. You know, we have a lot of animation tools. I mean, we do have 2D animation tools, we, and we, of course, have 3D animation tools. I wouldn't consider our program a character animation program, necessarily but certainly exposure to animation tool sets. And it doesn't mean you can't do character animation, but it's not something through our animation courses that we really focus on necessarily. Mm -hmm. I know Professor Beekman does do character design in some character building and some uh, biped and quadruped. So two, two legged and four legged movement things um, in, in his courses. But I do, I am familiar with, you know, programs out there that are strictly animation programs that spend a lot of time on, you know, starting out with 2D animation and life drawing, et cetera, and then doing very much more character oriented design. So there's, there are differences, you know. And one of the samples we're going to show you at the end of some of our senior work does include an animated piece um, that I think is kind of indicative of the types of animation that you see coming from our graduates. Um, it's typically um, purposeful. It, it, you know, this particular one was for a, a company that just patented a, a piece of equipment. Um, so I think it'll give you a little bit of perspective on the type of animation that, that many of our students are doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Lisa, I don't know if you're, you have anything from Seth or mm -hmm. Louis. Yep. Um, so there's a couple examples of, of both Seth and Louis doing a um, couple of just, they just graduated, a couple of our students just graduated. Um, but they were working on a project together to do character design and character animation for an, a game introduction. So like a pick your character game screen kind of thing. Yep. So you'll maybe get a feel for that also. And, and, uh, and, and absolutely, if you wanna talk more about, you know, career goals and animation, um, either 3D, 2D, um, hard surface modeling. So hard surface modeling is building things other than characters. Um, there's also effects animation out there. So doing smoke, clouds, hair, stuff like that. Um, so there's lots of different types of animation out there that we can talk about if you're, if you're interested, certainly. Well, I got a little different. <laughs> How about you, kid? <laughs> Uh, this screen really just talks about minors that you can you can also minor here in DDMA or you can also minor in, in art studio art or art history. So if you were over in biology, you know, or, or in some place someplace other than here, you can also minor in this if you if you felt there's a good connection. So for example, we're talking more to the engineers about the game and emerging technology um, minor because we feel that visualization is important in engineering and, and biology and the sciences. So they're, they're, you know, if you weren't interested solely in the DDMA major, there are minor opportunities also. Um, many of our students, this just shows many of our students go through the art courses. So over you know, 400 students a, a year go through art courses here at Wilkes not just our students because we don't have 433 students in our department, but that's across campus. All right. Um, so just a little history. So we started the department here in 2005. We started, you see from an, an well, that, that's actually clean. This was a, a room was a lot uh, more cluttered, <laughs> let's say. Uh, so we started from scratch. Uh, we started out with nine machines and um, we kind of grew it into a couple classrooms, main classrooms that we have. We have a little corner hub here 
in uh, in Bryseth is Bryseth Hall, the building. Um, those are photos. I'm actually sitting at that computer that's in the upper right hand corner on the left. Unfortunately, I came in to, to get this camera working and it didn't, I didn't have time to, pick, to fix it. So unfortunately, this just gives you a little view of what the studio looks like, or studios, I should say, look like. And, and it's, uh, like I said, it's a, it's a community feel. It's uh, students come in here, uh, possibly 24 seven, not that we promote middle of the night, you know, last yeah. minute works, working. Um, but it is card swipe access um, to the, both the building um, not during the day, but at night, um, and the lab all the time. So our students have access to the labs. So if you're either taking courses in um, IM or DDMA, or if you're a major, you have access to the labs. Um, as you can see, I maybe can't, but they, we, we do have uh, some Mac-based studios. So uh, one classroom now has IMAX Pros, and the other studio has Mac Pros. Um, all certainly the whole creative cloud and the Adobe suite, um, the whole Maya bundle, um, unity. Uh, there's also some specialized tools like nuke and Houdini out there. If you really were interested in doing more feature film oriented effects work. Uh, just a little demographic. Um, as of 2019, uh, sometimes you feel interest in that. When we started out in 2005, six, um, we had about 15 majors. I think we actually started out with less. We are about at 55 even this year in 2020. Um, I don't know the breakdown, male to female ratio, but um, in terms of department size, as I said, we have about, we do have about 55 students in the major. That is good. <laughs> Um, just a little slide on internships. So our students, um, our internship is a requirement. And sometimes, you know, students go to one of our faculty or, or internships go to one of our faculty, then we pass those on to our students. Uh, Lisa, sometimes, often. Yeah, have. we typically, I mean, but there is obviously an internships office on campus um, that works closely with students as far as making sure you're getting credits for your internship and that the internship site is appropriate for you. Um, but in many cases, we are able to leverage professional contacts that we have both locally and, as you can see from the list on the screen, all over the country, um, you know, depending on what you're interested in, where you're interested in going, we can usually leverage a relationship that we have through our professional practice into internships. So we really try to match people with more so what they're interested in doing as opposed to just sort of finding you a place to, you know, get your internship out of the way. Um, so, you know, if it's something, you know, if you want to move into a sort of a more motion oriented environment, we obviously have a number of people in different places. Um, one of our students actually just got a job at Fox Sports out in LA. Um, so we're really excited about that. But, you know, and then we, we also have local agencies that we work, we do quite a bit of work with. We're all on the boards of organizations and, and places that are, that are always looking for interns. So we do personalize the process of finding an internship as much as possible in that way. Yeah, absolutely. And as Lisa uh, said, we do have an internship office that has been doing some great um, internship work. So they bring, well, unfortunately right now they couldn't bring people to campus, but prior to this whole mess, um, we had several, uh, one, at least one a semester uh, what we would consider an internship job fair. In one of our buildings, they filled the whole place with uh, pr prospective um, employers and interners. I don't know if that's a word, but I just made it up. <laughs> so, you know. Um, but it's been, a, I, I think, a very robust thing that we've been doing here at Wilkes, uh, certainly. Um, and sometimes... Yeah, I mean, you'll, well, you'll find, too, even... You, we have many students that have done more than one. Um, we have several students that graduated this year that did two and three and four internships over time, um, depending on, you know, freelance jobs or, or side projects that they're able to pick up as well. So again, our, our, the work we do is unique in that way and that you could conceivably be doing more than one internship by the time you finish your four years and have a really great, you know, perspective on where you do want to work and also where you don't want to work and the kind of work that you don't want to do. 
Mm -hmm. um, that's an important aspect of, of an internship. Right. Yeah, and there might be things that you have on your mind that you want to, you, you have a company, oh my God, I mean, I played that game, I want to go work for that company, or, you know, I saw that movie and I want to try to work for that company. You know, there's discussions on how to get internships at a lot of different places, even if, certainly if you have some interest in that. Uh, I just went quickly to the next slide, Kirby Scholars Program. The, the Kirby, I, I, I got to defer to you, Lisa, because you always say KCCA. APK, <laughs> APKCFE. Um, actually, we just, they just named our, our most recent scholar. Um, so the, the LP Kirby Center is the Center for Free Enterprise and Entrepreneurship on campus. It is generally attached to our business school. Um, but they have a program called the Kirby Scholars. And what they do is they choose um, usually one to two students from each major who can come in and work with the clients that the Entrepreneurship Center has. So people starting up new businesses or people looking to grow their businesses in the community, both on campus and off, use the Kirby Center as a resource. So our students, like right now, um, our Kirby Scholar, Anna Perez, is a transfer st a student who transferred into Wilkes University. And she is doing um, graphic design work for various clients who are starting new businesses or trying to grow their businesses through the Kirby Center. So it gives students a lot of real world experience working with clients, but also experience working with other majors because she's working right alongside marketing majors on marketing plans. And she's working right alongside, you know, engineering, uh, engineers on product development. So it offers a lot of opportunity, not only to work with live clients in the community, but work across disciplines on campus. It also, I will mention, is, a, is technically a scholarship position, so it does pay um, if you're looking for like a work-study job or you're looking for a little bit of an extra source of income. Um, it is like a small stipend to be the Kirby Scholar as well. Well, Studio 20, um, Studio 20 is a student-run production organization who is mentored by Lisa. Hi, I'm the advisor of that as well. <laughs> um, so Studio 20, yes, yeah, Studio 20, we take on um, live clients, again, from the community. So if somebody either on campus or off is starting a business, having an event, needs a, we do t-shirts, we do logos, we do video, we, instructional videos, we do animations, we've done um, book design for professors on campus. So again, it's an opportunity to give students an experience with client interaction. It gives them experience with, you know, live jobs in the community, professionalism, um, you know, learning how to communicate with clients properly. Um, and, and again, you know, an extra sense of responsibility and learning what it means to be a professional creative. So we try as hard as possible in Studio 20 to mim not only mimic that real world experience, but also let the students try to run the club themselves. I mean, I'm an advisor, but my involvement is and should be, you know, as, as exactly that, at, at an advisory capacity. Um, they are interviewing clients, they're accepting or declining jobs, all of the, they're doing all of this themselves um, because it's important for them to learn about the process of making things in addition to actually making the things. So it brings us to uh, awards. So we certainly help uh, really promote our students to submit into different award uh, competitions. In this particular case, Kevin, um, submitted his game. So Planets the Game, it's called. You can go to planetsthegame.com and purchase Planets the Game. And through one of our uh, senior production courses, Kevin had the idea that he wanted to create this game. So we talked about it in class and he started doing the production for Planets the Game. So he designed all the cards, um, he designed the packaging, and he actually went out and did the website um, because we give our students a full range of you know, tools to, to create this multiple uh, multimedia presentation uh, content. Um, so you can go to Plants the Game, and he won in 17 for the Tabletop Award for uh, the Pennsylvania Consortium of Game Developers. And so another array of other students. Yeah, this one is the American Advertising Federation Awards. Um, I'm on the board of the American Advertising Federation, and we encourage students to enter the student competition. We had a really great year. Uh, we, had some, we had a really good run, 15, 16, 17, and we actually had a, a couple more winners this past year that we haven't added the photos yet. 
Um, but this is a great competition because not only, you know, obviously there are, there are the students that win getting that extra layer of validation, they're also getting a significant amount of exposure to all of the professional, um, you know, agencies and departments and companies that are part of part of the organization. Um, you know, the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Rail Riders and all of the major ski resorts and all of the um, agencies in the Scranton Wilkes-Barre area are all members of this professional organization. So in addition to the award aspect, which is wonderful, they're also getting that much more professional exposure, uh, which is really important in a creative field to, to make to get the right people seeing your work. Well, this is another uh, group oh, that Lisa led. This one's super exciting. <laughs> <laughs> this one's super exciting. Okay. So the state of Pennsylvania um, turns 200 and, well, the, the country, America as a country, turns 250 years old in 2026. Um, it, the word that it's, it's like a quintessential, it's a silly word. I can't even say it. But So why say 250th birthday? Um, so the governor's office actually instituted this competition in conjunction with the U.S. Postal Service called America 250. Um, and teams from across the state of Pennsylvania, there was over 200 students initially in the first round, um, came together and competed and created an ad camp, well, basically an ad campaign for the state of Pennsylvania. Why is Pennsylvania important? It, um, its position as one of the 13 original colonies. Um, you know, why is Pennsylvania important in celebrating our history and in, and in, in celebrating innovation moving forward? So we went through three rounds of competition and managed to actually win the top prize. So our, our team of six students um, beat 200 marketing students from across the state of Pennsylvania, a group of designers um, came up with the winning competition uh, or with the winning idea. So that was a really exciting win for us this year. Um, that campaign is currently being integrated into all of the state planning for the 250th that's going to happen in 2026 so we'll be working with them quite a bit moving forward as well um, on implementing that campaign so you're going to start seeing our billboards anytime now <laughs> so very exciting for, yeah. for our group uh, and this brings us to really kind of where our students have, have gone so just to give you an idea, as you, as you look through this list, and I have a couple of sheets of this, and this is just a splattering of some of our graduates. You, you can see that they're in different places. You know, some are all over the country. You know, Philly, Florida, New York City, Georgia. Uh, so there's lots of opportunity, obviously, all over the country and all over the world. And you know, you, what you also will notice is that there's different titles because, oh. we're, like I said, we're not a, like a one-stop. Everybody's not coming out with the same thing, same projects. We are really customizing your education, creative education, um, based on your skills, talents, and your desires. So you'll see things like motion people in here. You'll see graphic design oriented folks. Uh, a, a wide range as you look at titles. Here's another grouping. Um, give you a second just to look that over. Jersey again. <laughs> There's a few New Jerseys. One yeah, of the ones some on representing Jersey here. <laughs> <laughs> one of the ones on the previous slide, actually, uh, one of our young women graduated and, and works at works at a company called Wyden and Kennedy. Um, and you may not know, you may not have heard of Wyden and Kennedy, but I'm sure you've heard of um, Just Do It, the Nike campaign. The oh. Nike push. That's Wyden and Kennedy. Um, that's the ad agency that created all of that. And still, I believe, yeah, Nike still works with Wyden today. Yeah. Um, that's, that's Nike's agency of record is Wyden and Kennedy. So, so, I mean, you're looking at things like the Weather Channel and Rubbermaid and Wyden and Kennedy, and you have some really heavy hitters here. But then you also have people like Nona um, out in Cape May who started her own business. She has a thriving um, photography and design business that she's so, I mean, you, you're, and you're seeing even people working here in Pittston, at, you know, at Benco Dental, all the way to, you know, Westchester and, and, and other places out in, in Pennsylvania. So I think that's something to notice as well, depending on if you're, if you're comfortable living and working in a small market or a big market, we have people in all of those places. So it's not necessarily just, we're not necessarily just a design factory that's going to send you to New York or Philly. We could certainly do that. Um, but we could also, you know, find something that you can do and find, find a way for you to build a career in something in somewhere maybe that's a little bit unexpected. So that's kind of the end of my PowerPoint. You know, it kind of ends really here with 
um, it ends here with where students have gone. And I'm going to jump in and share the screen. I'm going to take the screen back um, and grab one of our most recent grads' uh, portfolios. This is a student. His name is Danny DeVito. Um, <laughs> let's get that out of the way. It's not the short, tiny Italian older gentleman. He's a young guy. He just graduated this past year. So um, on the other side, he's the anti-Danny DeVito. <laughs> Basically the exact opposite of the, the famous Danny DeVito. Um, but yeah, so Danny uh, focused primarily on sports design. Um, he did several internships with the Bronx Pinstripes and with the Washington Nationals before fi finally landing his, probably what be, would be considered his dream job working at Fox Sports. Um, he tends to do a lot of sports social media work, but part of that is branding and identity. This project he did, he, he decided to sort of rebrand the OKC Thunder. Um, it was a really popular project and it got a lot of attention on Behance and Twitter and things like that. But the thing I think is really cool about this one is the range of work that we're seeing here. You see a, a basic sort of logo design, right? He's, he's changing the actual logo of the, of the team, but then he's also looking at things like apparel. He's looking at things like home, away, statement uniforms, the court itself. Um, how, does that mark and, how does that mark and logo and colors manifest on different hats and different designs of shirts and jerseys and all kinds of different things. So we're looking at a really broad multimedia execution. Um, and then narrowing down to maybe an area where he was a little bit less comfortable. This is very much not sports. Um, so we were trying to encourage him to move into areas where that might be a little bit more challenging for him. So he did this, you know, this cake brand, which was something that was big stepping out of his comfort zone. Um, he did some on-screen artwork actually for, uh, a, it's a conceived project for a Madden game. So you're seeing the, the cover designs for the packaging but you're also seeing these um, uh, you, uh, user interface designs that he created. So the game would actually be, so you'd, you'd be able to choose your team, choose your colors and all the sort of things that you do with that. Um, I'm gonna jump down a little bit. One of the other really cool things that Danny did while he was at our school is he did, an, he did a third, fourth internship? I don't know, he did a lot. Um, he did an internship with the Wilkes um, Athletic Department. And at that time, they were very much sort of in between uh, logos, they were in between sort of mascot designs. So he was able to really create a brand and an identity for our, our athletic department, which is a division three athletic department. This is not, you know, we're, we're a division three school, we're not division one, we're not Notre Dame, we're not Bowling Green, you know what I mean? But he was able to give them the same level of graphics and the same level of sort of excitement that you would see on a division one team. So bringing up that level of, of polish was, was a really big accomplishment at that time. You can also see where he's using things like his own photography. So he, he, will, he would take his own pictures and then use them in the creation of the designs. And again, that approach, that sort of soup to nuts approach of all of the things that are involved in creating a beautiful poster like this and sort of seeing how, this, how it's made in the background um, was a really important aspect of Danny's portfolio. Ooh. We have some editorial design that he did, um, you know, he invented this, this women's magazine um, and, and sort of showed his skills with typography and organization. Um, this is some of the work that he did with the Nationals. This was live work, so this, you, would, you would have seen this where you're following the Nationals on social media or anything like that. You would have seen all of these things. Um, and that gave him a lot of experience in the <clears throat> professional sport, sports world and also made a lot of connections for him in that world because it is a very connected sort of place, just like everything else. So he was able to leverage a lot of contacts in the professional sports world. <laughs> Let's see, I also have, no, no, no. I also have Louis. Okay, so Louis is, Louis is a really interesting cat <laughs> that just graduated. He, um, he, he draws, he's an incredible illustrator. He, he, he draws a lot of sort of comic book style art. That's kind of his thing. Um, but he's also an exceptional 3D animator. Um, and you'll see a little bit of that melt together in his work. So he really admired these, uh, these DreamWorks, these classic DreamWorks movies. So one of the things that he did was redo the cover art. So he did all of these, all of these illustrations are Louis, 
Um, and he re-illustrated and redesigned all of the cover art for those movies. He also, um, you know, exer exercised his skills in logo design and type management um, in doing a restaurant menu um, and then a full identity. And the cool thing about Louis is you see these little mock-ups here, the little glass and the posters and that kind of stuff. Most mm -hmm. people will just sort of grab, those are mock-ups that exist in the world. So you, you grab a free one off the internet or grab the image of it off Photoshop and, and you know, carefully Photoshop the logo around the glass. Um, Louis builds all of his mock-ups in, in 3D. So he actually created this glass out of, in, in a, what, I'm sorry, Eric, what's the program name? I'm, I'm blanking. Cinema 4D. Cinema 4D. Yes, I, I don't teach 3D. <laughs> so he created, he created all of this in Cinema 4D and he was able to customize it to look like exactly what he wanted. Um, you'll see a few other examples of him doing that. And it was just such a great way to showcase yet another skill that he has. Um, he did this really great superhero magazine where he did all of the cover illustration. So he's showing not only his illustration skills, but typographic and layout skills here. Um, and here's where you really see his big character development project. He and another student um, whose, pro whose portfolio we'll take a look at really quickly, um, worked together to develop a whole set of characters for a fictitious game called Blazing Revolt. And what we see here is all of the research and the, and the different iterations that went into that character development, refining of the different facial features, differentiating the characters from one another so you'd be able to understand who was who in the game, um, you know, giving them more masculine or more feminine or, or, or different sort of features depending on what geographical area they came from. Um, and really starting to explore things like clothing, uh, color management, and the color scheme and color space that would happen in the game. So obviously they're not sitting here and designing an entire Blazing Revolt game, but you're seeing that you're very easily starting to understand the tone, the art direction, and the feel that they're going for um, in the game. And then they also did actual 3D um, mock-ups of, of what the characters began to look like. Uh, one of the things they learned from this project is that they bit off, I think, a lot more than they could chew. And they learned that throughout this process of, you know, we all want to design the next Grand Theft Auto, but in reality, just creating one of those apartment buildings is a significant amount of work. So they got a lot of perspective on what character development is and sort of what goes into it. Again, we're seeing a lot of Louis's design skills in the, in the logos and the artwork that he made, but he also built these dice and these chips in that 3D environment uh, so that he can showcase his skills. So imagine an employer that's looking at someone like Louis and saying, okay, so he can make logos, he can make publications for us, but he can also build models and diagrams and, and different functions um, of, of any kind of business. So he becomes a really marketable student. He becomes a student that has a lot of, that is a broad skill set that's very, very valuable. He also created his own e-commerce site. So, he, so as I said, Louis draws. So um, he designed all of these really great t-shirts and wasn't really sure what to do with these wonderful t-shirt designs he had made. So he actually made an e-commerce site and he sells them. So it's a little side business, makes him a little bit of money and also gives him a place to use these drawings and this artwork that he creates for a productive purpose. It teaches him about building and maintaining a site that, that sells things, an e-commerce site. Um, it teaches him about customer management. It teaches him about smaller brands and fulfillment and all of those things that come with having your own business. Uh, so it's a really good opportunity for, for Louis to experience that. Here's another project that he did that was a big growth opportunity for him. Um, as we all looked at Danny's sports stuff, everybody that looks at that's like, wow, how cool, I love it, I wanna do something like that. But Louis's not really a sports guy. So what he did is created esports teams, four of them, um, full identities for them. He made up the names, he made up the branding and all of the sort of social media graphics and things that would go with. So on this one, you can sort of see his preliminary work that he did, his, his initial sketches and, and sort of the first round of what this looked like. And then over his four years, he refined the project, he made it even better. And this was sort of the end result of one of the teams. Um, and you can see he created sort of a consistent style of, this e of the esports league. So he has multiple teams that have sort of different personas. 
different voices. He's taking into consideration color schemes and things that are related to any sort of systemic design. Um, so Louis is a really interesting case in that way. Let's see, you wanna look at Michaela? <laughs> so Michaela, um, again, one of our top students, really, um, really strong graphic designer, really strong in um, sort of general foundational design. And she created her own streetwear brand. So she's making the logo, she's making patterns for the backpacks. And she's also designing and creating um, a mobile app to, to sell those pieces. So she's getting, again, when we're talking about that multi-channel execution thing, um, you're seeing not only, you're seeing things like color management, pattern design, type design, composition, photography, um, UX and UI considerations, um, to develop even like a little bit of sort of development experience. So this is, so this is the goal for most of the senior portfolio level projects is to have, you know, something that shows all of this multi-channel experience that you will, that you're able to get with us. Just a little bit more print work that she did in the form of a menu for a cafe. Um, she redid her, she redid a, a, a campaign for Lollapalooza. So you can see here all the Photoshop layer work that she did. It's really important to us when students create portfolios that they show their process as much as possible so that you know, A, that she didn't like rip this off of somebody else and B, what she, you know, all of the steps that she took to get to where she ended up. Uh, Michaela also interned with the Wilkes University Admissions Department. So there she was able to create materials um, like Snapchat filters and banners and web graphics and all kinds of, you know, various materials that sort of help with the recruiting efforts. And she also learned what it's like to work within an existing brand. She learned what it's work to work like what, what it was like to work in an in-house department, which many companies have. Um, so, you know, internships should be giving you the experience of different types of workplaces. And that was a really good one for Michaela. She created a tequila brand called Moctezuma Tequila that was based off of um, like Mayan, uh, Mayan artwork. And this was a great exercise for her for research. Um, very rarely are we starting projects by immediately just sitting down and starting to design things. Um, oftentimes we look into history, we look at other art that informs what our ideas are, we make sketches, uh, we look uh, very, again, back into history very, very much. And what Michaela found was that these, cent these figures of the owl, the panther and the snake were significant figures in that culture. So she, and also looked at the illustration styles that they were using, the pattern like and the line, and the line qualities that they would use. So she created her artwork using that sort of mindset and that concept. And that's where the research became really, really important. You know, she made these in um, Adobe Illustrator, because I know it's a- Correct, company. yes. So she made the initial designs. She designed them flat, like, like as, just as you see here on this slide in Adobe Illustrator primarily, mm -hmm. um, and then took them into Photoshop and made them into the mock-ups that you're seeing here. So most of our student work is a combination of multiple programs. Um, Photoshop obviously is for photo editing and half tones and anything that's pixel based. Illustrator is obviously for illustrations. And typically we use InDesign for intense layout. Anything that's publication based or has a lot of words, like has a lot of text, um, that's sort of an InDesign thing. So that's a big thing that we push and a big theme that we talk about in a lot of the classes is software as a tool, obviously, and, and what's the, and learning what the appropriate software is to, to accomplish your goals as opposed to letting the software drive the design. That's a really important one. Software is a tool. It's like a hammer. It's like a pencil. That's all it is. It's just a tool that helps you create something. So we try not to focus too much on like, do you know the software? Because you'll, we'll, you'll learn the software. You'll work with it. You'll learn it and it'll come to you. But those ideas and those concepts and that research and that work that you put in, that's unique to you. And that's something that that that's where the best work comes from. So we do encourage people to see software as a tool. This is a project that Michaela did in our, one of our upper level um, design classes that you, where you learn a lot about the process of design. Um, it's in IM320 and we talk a lot about 
um, you know, maybe the less exciting parts. So these big, huge, large scale campaigns that you see on TV and on the web and everywhere, what goes into one of those and how many people are working on those and what does that kind of a team look like? And what is a, what are the document, what does the documentation look like that you're working on? So it's very much the business of design. And she came up with this enlightened project, which is uh, a nonprofit that helps women um, attain college education. So she did a website and she did an identity and she did a logo and colors and all of the cool things that go with it. But she also did a lot of back end research to create this thing that is, looks graphically very sound when you look at it. Mm -hmm. She did this, this, this campaign, sad. She did this campaign for the American Wildlife Foundation and the idea behind it was to use these really off-putting photos and to use these photos that are hard to look at for maximum impact. You know, she used the really big, bold type. She used the really unpleasant photos to really just punch you in the chest with how big and pervasive and bad this problem is. Um, so that idea and that concept and that sort of and balance and making sure that concept is coming across and that, that your viewer is feeling that feeling, that, that really heart sick feeling when they look at these photos, that's something we worked a lot on. That was something that was really important. And then again, we're showing how these ideas and these concepts can manifest out into multiple pieces. These are just, you know, quick magazine ads or billboards or ads that you would see out in the community where it has a headline and a picture and boom, your message is there. But you can see it also extends out into more significant data and facts and figures and percentages that might compel someone to donate or, or join the cause. Again, uh, Michaela is showing us a little bit of editorial design experience, as well as some significant Photoshop work. So you're seeing the, the original source images that she started with and, and where she ended. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, just, it's really impressive the work she did on that one. She put a little grill on him. <laughs> um, this is a series of book covers that she did. So this is an opportunity for us to show her illustration skills in addition to her typographic management. Um, she reinterpreted three classic novels, or four, I'm sorry, four. And let me just really quickly show you uh, Maddie's animation. This is a really fun one. So Maddie was one of those APKC, one of those Kirby scholars. So she was working with a, a young man, a, a gentleman who was creating this patent hack uh, app. And she did all of these illustrations in Adobe Illustrator and then animated the piece. I'm just gonna play it real quick. It's only three invention. seconds. So now what? How do you protect that invention and maximize its potential? The answer is a patent. Unfortunately, Conventional patenting options are costly, complex, and time-consuming. While patent professionals typically offer a sense of security, they can be difficult to work with. They often cost tens of thousands of dollars or equity in your invention, and there's no guarantee that they will earn you a patent. To be honest, their success rate isn't as high as you might think. So maybe you want to try doing it yourself. Drafting a patent without any help can be frustrating, because patents are often complex and time-consuming. But that's where we come in. At Patent Hacks, so you can see, um, I'm not going to play you the whole thing, but you can see how valuable something like that might be to a company. They can use that on their social media channels. They can use that on their website. They can use it as a television commercial. And all of those assets she was able to create using illustration, using type management, using animation. I believe she did this in, um, Eric, do you know what she did this in? I can't remember. I think she was After Effects. She did this in After Effects. Um, and all of these sort of foundation, you can, so, so the, you can start to see how all of these foundational classes come together um, to be able to create something like this. It's not just one class in animation or one class in, in Illustrator. It's all of these, and I think she even took a sound, she took sound. We have a sound class that, that we offered. She, that, uh, uh, with Steve Houston, one of our adjuncts. So she even took a class in, in sound and, and how to create music and sounds for, for video. So, you know, you can see how all of those skills can come together and how they can create a really rich experience for your client and ultimately make you a really valuable person to work with and to give money to for making things. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, that's what we want. We want you to make stuff and we want people to pay you for it. Like that's <laughs> the goal. <laughs> so I'm gonna give the screen back actually. I'm gonna stop the share real quick there. Because I think we're just about reaching the end of our hour. Oh.
yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> and I'm sure you have questions. So, um, you know, I want to make sure I'm not taking up all that time. Is there any questions you have for us? We could not possibly have been that thorough. <laughs> yeah, I have to think about a couple questions. <laughs> and, and even if you don't think of them right now, and as Eric said, you're at the beginning of this search. You're you know, going into your junior year of high school, right? Yeah. Um, you know, even if a week from now or a month from now or six months from now, you think of a question that you have, not only even about Wilkes, but just about being a creative professional. Um, you are more than welcome to reach out to us anytime. I think it's hard. I don't know what your experience is. Um, I don't know what your family does or what exposure you've had to this kind of work, but I know a lot of people, parents especially, I'm a parent, I get it. My parents went through this whole, this same thing. Um, a lot of people get a little panicky when you talk about the idea of majoring in, in art or anything creative. Um, and it's really important to me that we always try to dispel that myth of the starving artist. It's not real. It does not, <laughs> it's not, it's not something that happens. We're actually a very employable group of people. Um, we, and, and it's important to us, you know, as we're teaching you, what it means to be a creative professional and what that career path looks like, because it doesn't always look like the same path. Like if you want to be a teacher, you go to school and you become a teacher and you take a test and then you're a teacher and then you get to be a teacher and do whatever you want. You know, sometimes our career paths, as you saw, especially from that last slide, they don't always, there's not always a job title attached to the major. There's not always a, you know, a job title that you may have heard of already. Sometimes you wouldn't, sometimes the job you have, you'll have when you graduate does not even exist as we sit here right now. Mm -hmm. right. So it's not, it's not something to be trifled with, but it's also something that can be intimidating and confusing to a lot of people. So if you guys have any questions or concerns about learning about majoring in a creative field, even if it's about another program at another school, please feel free to reach out because I'm ha we're, we're happy to help people understand how to be creative professionals. It's really important. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you show us um, how many <laughs> options available there were to, to the art field there. Well, it's, you know, people don't think of it. I think, you know, when I was co coming out of school, I knew about the jobs my parents did and the jobs my parents' friends did and my friends' parents. Like, I didn't know that textile designer was a thing. I didn't know that industrial designer was a thing. I didn't know that, you know, lighting designer was a thing. That's a real thing. It does, they do very well. <laughs> the EDM shows are very popular right now. Um, you know, I didn't know what digital content creation was. So it's, it's not something that a lot of people understand as, as at seven, 16, 17 years old. So anything we can help demystify or clarify, like I said, even if you don't end up looking at Wilkes, please let us know because it's important to me that we fill our, our industry and fill our professional space of great people who are really excited and motivated to do this work. And I believe your presentation was pretty darn good. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. When you said broaden, broaden the horizons and big time you did there. Well, we I, hope so. I hope time, so. A lot of times when I think about animation, like she's in animation, she's mm -hmm. advanced animation in her high school. Yeah. Um, a lot of times I was always just thinking of cartoons mm -hmm. and maybe game design. Yeah. But then a lot of the stuff that you showed us here, like, you know, yeah. making clothing and stuff to that nature and, and the logos for the sports teams and everything. Mm -hmm. okay. like, and you know, even those, like, and even animation and like, you know, I have a friend who is an illustrator and she works for a company that creates games for therapeutic purposes. Mm -hmm. So right now she's working on a game. It's like a pirate themed game, but it's for kids who have trouble with spatial relationships. So mm -hmm. they're designing this game for occupational therapists to use to be able to improve children's spatial relationships. There's a team of like 10 people working on this game. Um, so, you know, there's so much more out there than just Disney and, you Thank know, you. Hanna Barbera and, you know, <laughs> corporations and, and corporations and major companies are using animation in their lobby artwork and, and, and you know, putting full three story screens on the sides of their buildings and they need digital content for that. They need you know, they need to project something onto those screens. And that's very much where we come in. We make, it's, it's, it's not even about making a design or a logo or a movie or anything. It's digital content now. It's just digital content creation. And it has as many applications as the engineers can think of for it. A big example down here would be um, the side of the Harrah's Casino building down here in Atlantic City. Sure. And animation. 100%. Right Absolutely. Okay. 
All right, fantastic. <laughs> so there's a lot, there, the, the, the fields go very, very deep. And I think, you know, our, our multimedia approach is a, is a good one. I mean, we, we really look at maximizing their skill set as much opportunity as possible while still making sure that those design decisions, those creative decisions they're making are sound through you know, our foundational work that we do. Do those colors go together? Are, are they gonna give somebody a seizure as they're driving down the road? <laughs> yeah. These are really important things. You know, these, are, these are really important aspects that you, know, you, you, you take a foundational design class to learn and then you learn the fancy magic stuff that you get to do that looks really cool. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> like I said, very, very, very informative. Yes. I hope so. I hope so. You're very informative. Yes. All right. Very Great. Correct. Helpful. Um, so if you do end up having any questions, you're more than welcome to reach out to myself or any of the faculty members that have been on the um, meeting today. Um, but I believe your tour is going on right now. So if you want to head over to the tour, more than welcome to check that out. I believe it's nice in Pennsylvania. I'm not in Pennsylvania right now, but um, <laughs> hopefully it's nice out there and the students aren't stuck in the rain or anything. So um, thank you so much for um, coming and listening to us. And I hope that you learned a lot of information today. Yeah, we did. We did. <laughs> great, great, great. All right, well, enjoy the rest of your um, open house. And like I said, let us know if you have any questions. Great to meet you guys. Thank you yeah, so much. Thank, thank you all. Thank, thanks, Alex thank and you. the family for coming. We appreciate it. And faculty. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you.